Welcome. In this video, we'll discuss how to determine the amp draw of small brushed DC motors. We'll look at a 12 volt motor and a 6 volt motor. And we'll look at how to determine the amp draw at the no load state, where the motor is just outside of any, it has no wheels or pulleys or anything attached to it, just basically unloaded, and how to determine the amp draw when it's under a load, and most importantly, how to determine the amp draw when it's stalled. This factor is often extremely important when you think in terms of building a robot that rolls in up to a wall and then can't go forward and its wheels lock up. Or you have a machine with a pulley running and some design where you have these little motors all over it and there's a mechanical failure and your motor stalls. How much current will this motor draw when it stalls versus just under a normal load versus under no load. Now, oftentimes when you look at the data sheets, if you can find one for some of these motors, sometimes the data sheet doesn't exist. You just get some number associated with the amp draw. Normally they're giving you the no load number, which is the lowest number you're ever going to see. But what you really need most times is the stall number. Now, especially when you're thinking in terms of what sort of motor driver chips they do I need in order to drive these sorts of motors. So to get started the parts you'll need is I'm using the first motor we'll look at is a little, just a little 6 volt gear motor. Now I think I bought it from somewhere like SparkFun. You'll need a motor that you want to test for these various cases of amp draw. You'll need a power supply to correspond with what the motor needs, the 6 volt motor, so 6 volt power supply and you'll need your multimeter and at times you may need some just regular alligator clips. So the first thing you want to do is swap your multimeter from the voltage and ohms reading over to an amperage, read, an amperage slot and go to the largest one in my case it's the 20 amps I know this little motor is not hopefully won't pull near that much but swap your lead over to the highest amps you have instead of the milliamps and the microamps go to your whole lamp reading until you know what the draw is actually going to be to err on the side of caution go to the larger and then you can turn your meter on to the amp setting but now we can hook up the motor in a sense the cables given this is a reversible motor the colors aren't as important as just making sure that you're being consistent with how you're hooking it up. We want to test amperage so we can take the ground cable and attach it with an alligator clip over to the black wire on our motor. Now we'll have the ground circuit and then we need to put our meter in the circuit to test amp draw and how do you do this well you put your black lead of your meter toward the side that the black lead is just think about it there's the black lead so you're putting it here and then you'll put the red lead toward the more positive side at this point you can turn on your meter to the amps and you may want to pick up your motor if it's like mine and you have a little wheel on it and then you just connect it and you'll get a reading in this case we're at 50 milliamps very little draw on this little bitty motor and this is the no load amp draw 47 milliamps because this is whole lamps that we're dealing with and a thousand milliamps would be one amp so this mark would be your hundreds in milliamps and so we're at 47 milliamps and it's really easy if you got a little bit motor and it's got a wheel to get the stall current all you have to do is if it's a motor spinning really really fast these are about 100 to 120 rpm motors 
that you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to use gloves or pliers with rubberized ends on them. But all you have to do is stop the shaft from spinning to get the stall current. And notice how the amps are jumping way up there at 700 milliamps. <laughs> Just think about that. From no load, and this is the number you'll often see on the data sheet, you would say, oh, it only pulls 50 milliamps. I can use most any motor driver I could ever come across, any transistor. But then when you stall it and you lock it down and it's up there at 700 milliamps, that's all, that's... 700 milliamps. You're only 300 milliamps away from a whole amp. And that's how you get no load and stall. And you can immediately see it on your meter. How do you get load is you can't really get to figure out exactly how much it's going to draw until you actually build the machine and then you can hook a meter into the circuit going to the motor while it's under load and you can read it. But you know that it's going to be somewhere between 50 milliamps up to 700 milliamps. That the load current is not going to exceed this stall and it's not ever going to go below the no load. So you can test it and get a sense. You can start putting a little pressure on this and bogging it down and you'll see two, three hundred. But that's not a necessarily an accurate reading until you build whatever machine, the robot, and then hook the meter in this exact same kind of way. And that's all there is to it. I'm going to unhook this, not kill the battery pack entirely. And that's no mystery. So what would we say? What would our values be? For the 6-volt motor, we're at 50 milliamps, anywhere from 45, 50. As your battery drains, this, as the battery gets lower, this number is going to get lower. But there's your minimum, no load. The stall maximum was up there at 760 something milliamps. And then we know that the load is going to be somewhere in between these two numbers and depending on if it's a lighter load it'll be closer to that 50 milliamp range if it's a heavier load on almost to the stall you're going to be closer to this 760 770 milliamps so any motor driver to be really safe you could use a motor driver that can handle one amp in surges and then normal continuous operation is going to be in your 500 milliamp range that would probably be perfectly fine for, for this particular motor. But you always want, the, the safety factor is you double up. So if you had a motor driver or a circuit like, a chip like, for example, this one. This is a L298N. And at its minimum, it can deal with two amps. So something like this chip would be, well, almost overkill for this little motor but it would work and you'd know that this chip will always be able to drive this motor to be able to drive two of these motors that will be able to dissipate enough wattage you could do your ohms calculations with the power rules and figure out that this chip would always work with this size motor this is a L298N you'd need diodes and other external circuitry to be safe with it but to deal with back EMF off the motor, but this chip would be perfectly fine given the no load and the stall current draw. Now we'll test the load, no load, and stall current on this, a 12 volt motor. Notice it's significantly larger than the little 6 volt motor, but depending on how well made the motor is, the size of the motor is not necessarily very accurate indication of how much current you can expect one a motor to draw that many times these little bitty hobby motors that are not gear motors the cheaper little hobby motors that you can buy for two three dollars some of those can pull an uh, amp and a half or three amps in just no lo in, in a loaded condition or a stall condition whereas this motor might pull 
500 milliamps install condition if it's a well-made motor on the inside. So you, the size of the motor is not necessarily an indication of how many amps you can expect it to draw. And the data sheet is a good starting point, but it's not telling that depending on how good the data sheet is and what batch of the manufacturing line of the motor you ended up with, that data sheet may be plus or minus 10, 20, 50 percent off. So the only way you'll really ever know what these values are between no load, load, install is to break out the meter and get you a battery pack. This is 12 volt battery pack and test the motor yourself. To do this, same procedure as before. You can start with the ground if you want to. Just hook one wire to the motor. Hook the ground to your battery pack. Now we have a continuous path from the negative of the battery pack to this side of the motor. Then we can hook our meter. The black lead will go to your motor and the red lead will go to the red lead of your power supply. We can turn on our meter at this point. Our meter, notice the cable still in. In my, in my case, it's 20 amps on my meter and it's set to the whole amp scale. You don't want to ever try to test these with a milliamp scale because like I said, the size of the motor doesn't give you an indication of if it just because it says milliamps and no load, as soon as you apply like a stall to it, you could very well jump up to whole lamps and you'll blow the fuse in your meter. So start and go with the margin of safety to the amp setting. The highest amperage setting for where you plug your lead into your meter and the highest amperage setting on your meter itself. At this point, all we'll have to do is hook up our leads. Making sure when you're using these alligator clips that they're both not touching the case or you'll short out. <laughs> you'll create a short. <laughs> um, I did that once while making this video, so I figured it would be wise to inform people of it. This is the negative lead of my meter. Here's the positive lead. And just now we can look. And we're at 27 milliamps in a no load state. Shaft is spinning. So this actually draws less milliamps when it's running than this little bitty motor did. Once again, the size of the motor is no indication of what your milliamp or your amperage draw is going to be for a motor. So we have 27, 25 milliamps at no load. Now let's give it a let's add some load. Now we have this larger wheel. Notice that just the wheel itself gives a little bit of load where it gets a little more amp draw. And what happens when we stall it? Goes up to 718 at stall. Just watch the meter as I lock it down. 720, that's your stall current. And then if you want to see load, you can just hold it a little bit and you'll see the milliamps that the amp draw is going to go up based off of how much how much of a load you put on the wheel and it doesn't take much just a little bit and you'll be up there at 100 200 milliamps with this particular gear motor after we've done that now we can record our numbers around 27 milliamps at no load, around 720 milliamps at stall. So you know that your load amp draw is going to be somewhere in between these two numbers. And the more of a load, the closer it's going to get to this. The less of a load, the closer it'll get to that number. And you can actually test the actual load once you built your robot or whatever device mechanism you're building by doing the exact same thing that we've done with both of these motors. That's all there is to it. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. 
And if you like this video, please click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.